discussion. I intend to continue building relationships and working with every single member of this committee on other policy, regardless of what happens in this committee room today or in the future. There have been numerous discussions with this committee's membership to craft language that would be acceptable to at least five members in order to pass it out. While a draft that would do just that was created, I personally believe those changes would undercut the bill in a significant way. Therefore, I will not be offering a committee sub for HB 96 and it will remain exactly as is. Section 1.07, subsections 26 of the Texas Penal Code already defines an individual as a human being who is alive, including an unborn child at every stage of gestation, from fertilization until birth. That's in statute right now. If somebody kills a pregnant woman, they're currently charged with double homicide. If a drunk driver kills a pregnant woman, they're charged with intoxication manslaughter twice. This standard is applied throughout code with the only exceptions being for women, doctors, and medical professionals who intentionally end the lives of unborn children. The Texas Declaration of Independence, the Texas Constitution, the U.S. Declaration of Independence, and the U.S. Constitution all stand for the fact that government is to protect God-given right to life. The 5th and 14th Amendments to the U.S. Constitution state that life cannot be taken without due process of law. The Tenth Amendment says that all powers not given to the federal government are reserved to the states respectively. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is our duty, I believe, as Texans to stand up and stop the killing of unborn children. At the heart of HB 96, HB 986, correction, HB 896, are two main policy objectives. First, the bill aligns code that already recognizes life begins at fertilization, which I stated a moment ago. Second, it removes exceptions to murder, assault, and manslaughter throughout the code. I feel compelled to bring up the fiscal note. According to the LBB, there's $227 million negative fiscal impact, impact to the state over the biennium, with it growing to around $175 million per year after that. Their reason for the cost is they estimate an additional 42,800 babies being born each year. The fact that we're putting a price tag on babies is reprehensible and the exact reason that I filed this bill. I seek to treat unborn babies the same way we treat babies and other human beings that are already born, standardized across the entire statute. If this law saves one life, the fiscal note is worth it because life is priceless, protecting it is government's most fundamental role. You know, I'd be remiss not to mention that if this bill passes, that my peers, all Republicans across the board, would have to be ready to spend more money on the things we're probably going to talk about a little bit later today. And I think most are. There are many people here registered to testify and have their opinion heard. My hope is all sides, I want to repeat, all sides are heard. I believe that when we have spirited, respectful debate, that um, we can learn from one another. We will not agree almost every time on this topic. But I think being respectful to one another, we can learn where each other stand and where they're coming from and their mindset. First Amendment rights are very important, especially tonight. So those of you that agree with me, I'm appreciative that you're here. Those of you that are going to disagree with me tonight, I'm also appreciative that you're here because your voice matters. You deserve to be heard. Wherever you are on this, thank you for being here, and thank you for registering, and thank you for being brave enough to come up and, 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 and speak your heart and where you come from. I appreciate the committee's work and the ambitious, ambitious agenda you have. I'm prepared to answer some questions, and I respectfully request the right to, uh, to close, sir. Okay, uh, you're recognized to reserve your right to close. We're going to call panels of four witnesses. I'm actually going to call two panels at a time. One panel to take the witness stand, and then the second uh, group of four, I'm going to ask that you come wait, and we've got four seats reserved for you here. And so um, the first panel who's um, who's up is Richard Deott. Yvette Deott. Rich Rich Deott. Thank you, Rich Diot, Yvette Diot, Jim Baxa, and Stephen Bratt. Huh? Okay, go ahead and sit down. You have called your name. The next panel will be, um, is
is Ashley Bratton here? Yep. Okay, Ashley, why don't you actually come join us here on the panel as well? Is Jim here? Would you call him? Jim. Jim, you're up. Jim, come on. And then the next panel is going to be Paul Brown, Eliel Rosa, Bruce Kendrick, and Mindy Lay B. Riggs. Jim, why don't we start with you, if you'll state your name, your affiliation, and your position. Yes, sir, thank you. My name is Jim Baxa. I'm representing myself, and also representing West Texans for Life. My position is for this bill. All right. Um, so, in West Texans for Life, this is our number one bill. This is the bill that is taking priority. We are grading it very heavily on our scorecard. And there's many reasons for that. One is this bill actually acts like we believe that abortion is murder. I haven't seen any other bill that acts like abortion is murder. We say as pro-lifers that we believe abortion is murder. And this bill allows us to prove that we believe that. If we believe that abortion is murder, we recognize that we better charge everyone involved with that crime. This bill also does something wonderful. And it, it stands in the face of a tyrannical system in Washington, D.C. that has given an opinion that murder is okay. An opinion that we know is wrong, an opinion that we know is unconstitutional. Roe v. Wade is unconstitutional, and the Tenth Amendment puts it to y'all to stand up against that tyranny and do what's right. Thank you, Jim. Members, any questions? Did you have a, a question for the author or for Jim? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Semiotti, I forgot you had a last minute question for the author, but if you'll ask Jim, Mr. Semiotti. Thank you, Chairman. And there was something that you just mentioned in terms of looking at it, and thank you for your testimony, yes, in terms of looking at it as um, murder. And so there's a section of the bill relating to the penal code. Have you read that section? Yes, ma'am, I have. The, the chapter 19 of the of the penal code, do you know what, what offenses are included? Oh, the homicide uh, section of the code. And uh, one thing we love about this bill is that it takes that exception out, where previously there's an exception for the unborn baby there. We're recognizing it as a baby, but we're putting an exception into the uh, clause that doesn't make any sense. So, so, the, so the legislation, in essence, allows the state to charge a woman with murder, is that correct? A, a woman who has committed murder should be charged with murder, yes ma'am. Okay. So a woman who has an abortion is allowed under the legislation to, a, the state will charge a woman who has committed an abortion with murder, is that correct? Well, you say will charge, and that, that I can't say it's correct so because, is allowed, yeah, the, the, that, the bill would allow the Attorney General to make that determination. Now, let's put it this way, in reality, the Attorney General is probably going to figure out a plea agreement with the mother to help her testify against the abortionist. That's probably so, what's going to happen. Well, apart, so I, I just want to, so I'm just trying to clarify. Sure. Where, so the legislation is allowing a state or DA or a member to charge a woman who has <coughs> undergone an abortion procedure to be charged with murder herself. Is that correct? Um, I, I think you're phrasing it wrong, but, but your idea is correct. What the bill does... Sure. It, what the bill does is it allows the state to charge a murderer who happens to be the mother of the baby that is being murdered. The, okay, so let's put semantics aside in terms of, and I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. I hear mm -hmm. what your point is, but I, I'm just trying to understand or to, to really highlight that a, a woman who undergoes an abortion procedure is going to be charged with murder. She can be charged with capital murder as well, correct? It, that is a potential possibility. Capital murder is subject to the death penalty, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So a woman who undergoes an abortion could be subject to the death penalty for having an abortion. But you said so right, yes or no? So you put you said put semantics aside, but then you went right back into no, semantics. I'm, I'm, I'm really <laughs> <laughs> no, a woman who and I disagree with that. Sure. But Go ahead. So a so a woman who undergoes an abortion procedure can be charged by the state, whether it's a prosecutor or whomever, with capital murder and herself be subject to the death penalty for 
having an abortion. Is that correct? That, that is a potential. Okay, thank, you. That, 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 yeah. thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Members, any other questions? Okay. Um, the chair calls. Uh, is it Rich? Rich? Yeah. Rich Dion. Rich Dion. If you'll state your name, your affiliation, your position on the bill. My name is Rich Dion from South Lake, Texas. I represent myself and Life Education Action, an educational group committed to advancing a thorough biblical knowledge of what the Bible really says about abortion for those who really want to know. I speak today in favor of the bill, but I recommend three changes. Remove the provision that automatically criminalizes the woman. Remove the come and take it provision and replace it with a trigger so that the Texas bill becomes effective on the passage of bills of similar simple content in 20 other states so that the legal schedule for all would converge at the same time at the Supreme Court level in a show of national conviction. Here's why this is important. Jesus did not come into the world as a baby, but as a conceived human being. And he lived nine months of a perfect human life before he was born or revealed on Christmas. Isaiah said it would be a sign that the virgin would conceive. The angel went to Mary in Luke chapter 1 and said she would conceive. And the angel came to Joseph in Matthew chapter 1 and said Mary had conceived. Jesus knows the life of the unborn. He knows their names. He knows the numbers of tiny little head, uh, hairs on their head. May God give justice to every one of the 63 million of his unborn children. Any other questions? All right. Um, Ashley? Ashley, the chair calls. Uh, Thank you. Your name, your position. My name is Ashley Bratton. Um, I am a child of Christ, and I'm called to be salt and light. Mm -hmm. I am for the bill on behalf of myself and my six younger brothers and sisters. One of the most concerning issues in our society today is a lack of respect for human life. The unborn child has no rights and has no protection because without the proper permission, this life has no value. This idea has been proven throughout history to be evil and wrong. The concept of a human life unworthy of life is disrespectful and inconsistent with the values that our society claims to uphold. Protection of the weak, compassion, and love. Many use a mother's right to bodily autonomy as a defense of abortion, saying no one can use my body without my specific permission. In this context, meaning that after the correct biological process of reproduction has begun, a woman has the right to defy the natural order of things and tear a baby from the place it belongs in order to reclaim a uterus which functions solely for the gestating of an unborn child. If the uterus exists for the unborn child rather than for the mother, is it not reasonable to think that a child has a right to live in its natural environment? Please. There must be a standard of personhood that is not limited to one's physical ability. You have a responsibility to defend the sanctity of life for all of the people over which you have authority and influence. Okay. Um, Chair now calls us Steve Bratton. You'll do the same. My name is Stephen Bratton. I'm the pastor of preaching at Grace Family Baptist Church in Houston, and I'm testifying for myself in support of the bill. And before I go any further, I want to say it was mentioned earlier that there's too much religion uh, in these conversations. And I want to just say that these are all religious because it's all based on what we worship. Do you worship yourself or do you worship the Lord? I want to address a point that's come up and is the reason why so many oppose this bill. And that's the idea that this would criminalize women. Some have said that they oppose any bill that would criminalize or put civil penalties on women. It is important that you understand that all this bill does is codify in Texas law, what is already true, whoever authorizes or commits murder is guilty. Yeah. They're guilty already in a court that is far more weighty than any here in Texas. Mm. The most heinous thing that we can do as individuals is to try to convince someone that they are not guilty of a crime when in fact they are. The most heinous thing that you can do as people who have the opportunity to bring justice is to somehow make people believe they are innocent in this world when they stand <laughs> accountable before a righteous God. Mm. God has placed you here for such a time as this. And when your final day comes, the one judging you will be the supreme judge. He has declared you shall not murder. So the question you have to ask yourselves is, are you going to obey God, worship God, or worship man? Thank you. The next panel of witnesses. 
Dan Wright, Space. David Covey, and Brian Martin. Again, that's Daniel Hawkins, Maggie Wright, David Covey, and Brian Martin. Uh, yes, my name is Mindy Lee Fires, and I'm from Midland, Texas, born in Fort Stockton. By the time I was born in 1976, abortion was already legal. Since being legalized through the state of Texas, Texas led the way, millions of people have failed to rise to their destiny and their inheritance. I'm here as a representative of the first generation of the incomplete. As a generation, we are maimed and incomplete. This generation is missing those who would be business leaders, teachers, representatives, dreamers. We are literally missing billions of dollars in taxpayer money. That's 55,000 taxpayers per year for the state of Texas. Representative Nieve, 150 people today that could be paying taxes. Abortion is generationally, fiscally, and societally a bankrupt policy. Today, you are nine. Representative Leach, Smith, Meyer, White, Farrar, Davis, Kraus, Nive, and Johnson. Yesterday, they were nine. Today, we are all witnesses as to what will be decided once again. To not act is to act. I request and urge that you take a vote today. My name is Helio Rosa. Um, I am a Brazilian on my way to citizenship in America, and I'm shocked with a lot of things that I've been seeing here. But I, you know, I prepared a statement here, but because of the time constraints, I will just quote three sentences. Number one, uh, it was heard here that uh, we have around 100, if I'm not mistaken, 190 cases of rapes of. Uh, people with disabilities, and that is an epidemic. What does 62 million stand for? Hmm. Number two, uh, it was said that vic victims' voice are powerful, and they are indeed powerful. And I'm here to represent the voices of those who cannot speak anymore. <laughs> and number three, I would like to say that simply put, abortion is the death penalty to a baby for the actions of someone, somebody else. Thank you very much. Hi, um, you've been provided with a, uh, a testimony for a three-minute version, and I'll give the one-minute version. My name is Bruce Kendrick. I'm the constituent, a constituent of Representative Leaches and the Director of Life Initiatives at Water, Watermark Community Church in Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, I lead our ministries restoring vulnerable children and families and women and men with unexpected pregnancies and past abortions, um, restoring them. Uh, I'm here in support of HB 896 today, thanking you for giving this bill a hearing and asking you to vote in favor of this bill as well as to sign on your support for this bill. Roughly two weeks ago, I received a call from Representative Leach asking if I knew what this bill did and if I could support giving the death penalty to a woman who has an abortion at three weeks. I thought the question oversimplified this bill, but also appropriately addressed the issue. I was asked for a simple yes or no, and then we ended the conversation. I'd like to expound on my answer now by asking, what is a woman who has an abortion at three weeks abort? If it's something other than a human being, we can end all of these testimonies now, save ourselves a lot of time, and go home. But if she is aborting a human life, you must vote to affirm this bill, moving it out of this committee, because you cannot otherwise call yourself pro-life or pro-woman. We cannot regulate Amen. abortion. Life begins at fertilization, so it does not matter if an abortion takes place at three weeks, three months, or nine months. The issue of what is being aborted is where this issue starts and where it stays, without which we remain a walking contradiction. Thanks. Good evening, I'm Paul Brown. I'm representing myself on behalf of uh, HB 896. I'm supporting this bill. Um, I've got right here a letter, actually, from you, Chairman Leach, and uh, I want to take the opportunity to agree with you. Um, what, what you've said to me uh, on March 26, 2019, in this letter, you said, I firmly believe that life begins at conception, that every life is created for a purpose, 
and that it is our duty in Texas to not just protect life, but to actively promote a culture of life. I agree wholeheartedly with everything you said there. And additionally, you wanted to say, as a passionate pro-life conservative, you have my commitment to advocate for every life from the womb to the tomb. Beautiful words, and I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um, it's for that reason that I expect that you and anyone else um, here that agrees with those words will vote in favor of House Bill 896. Anything less would show that uh, one does not agree that life begins at conception. And as James 4.17 says, whoever knows the right thing and fails to do it for him, it is sin. Thank Amen. you. Chair now calls Brian Martin, Daniel Hawkins, Maggie Wright, and David Covey. The next panel is going to be Jessica Templin, Star Finn, David Templin, and then Klein Cove. Daniel Hawkins. I am a resident of House District 93, uh, homeless representative crowd, and I'm representing myself. I am for this bill. Um, we were, Roe versus Wade was inflicted upon us uh, because the state of Texas never acknowledged the full personhood rights of preborn children. Abortion has always been treated as a regulated medical procedure, not as homicide. And subsequent pro-life laws have continued to regulate abortion rather than provide equal protection for the preborn. After reading the Roe opinion, both the body and especially footnote 54, I have to think that if the language of HB 896 had been the law in the early 1970s, Texas would have handily won their 14th Amendment argument in the Roe v. Wade case. Uh, if, H if HB 896 is passed, abortion would be finally treated as what it is, homicide the murder of innocent humans. Given our nation's history and the reasons that the 14th Amendment was enacted, shouldn't our definition of a person be as inclusive as possible? Shouldn't it apply to all living organisms that can be scientifically classified as homo sapiens? I urge you to pass HB 896 without amendments or compromises. Thank you. My name is Maggie Wright, hello, um, and I'm testifying on behalf of myself, and I am for this bill, and I want to thank you, Chairman Leach, and committee members, and especially thank Representative Peter Hope for doing this. Life is very important. I can't figure out how we as a nation have gotten to this point, and in Texas. Um, I'm for life from conception to natural death. Standing for life should never be a partisan issue. We the people hired you to make laws for all Texans, and that is for the unborn also. Breitbart had an article that stated that abortion was the number one cause of death in 2018 in the world. This is our modern day Holocaust. We must do something. We must be an example here in Texas that we will end this now. I say, you know, we will look back on this and we'll, we'll wonder why we didn't. And today, abortion is our Goliath. And we, like David, will slay this giant abortion with God's help. And I, I want to beg you to get this out of committee this is important for the unborn. Me as a grandmother and a mother, and I'm sure you all have children, and to look in those babies' eyes, and now they want to kill even a baby after it's born. This is unacceptable. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members, my name is David Covey. I am the Republican County Chair for Orange County Republican Party and the Legislative Chair for the Texas Republican County Chairman's Association. Speaking here on behalf of myself and the Orange County Party in favor of this bill. 
Members, I worked for the majority of my time to elect Republicans up and down the ballot, and the number one issue for Republicans is the sanctity of life. Uh, that, that is what we focus hands down uh, the number one issue. Uh, members, New York has recently passed one of the most pro-death pieces of legislation in the history or in our, our lifetime. Uh, along with that, the Virginia governor has come out in support of infanticide. Uh, they are taking bold statements to the left. Uh, the Senate Majority Leader, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, said, we're saying here in New York that women's lives matter, and I would like for y'all to join us in saying that here in Texas, Babies' lives matter. Here in oh. Texas, Texans' lives matter. Here in Texas, all lives matter. Thank you. Just to be clear, uh, clear for the record, you're here testifying on behalf of yourself. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And not the bill. Um, all right. Members, any questions? Yes, Representative Navi. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, how long have Republicans held the majority of the state in Texas? So Republicans, I guess, got a majority. I want to say in the nineties. Why do you think this legislation hasn't passed in, your, in the past when Republicans held a majority in the last session that year? I think we're majority. That is a great question. <laughs> 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 members, any other questions? Uh, Chair, um, also Brian Martin. Hello, my name is uh, Brian Martin, and I represent myself, and I am for. HB 896, and I thank you, Chairman Leach and committee for this public hearing. I'm old enough to remember a time when abortion was not the law of the land, and I hope to live long enough to see it repealed. In my opinion, it has not made our country, our state, or our people any better. 165 years ago, slavery of human beings was the law of the land, and it was abolished. We've had suffrage of women's rights in our country, in 1920, with the passing of the 19th Amendment, women began to be considered equal. In the 1930s and 40s, Jews in Europe were considered less than human. After the Holocaust, the world united and said, never again. The one thing all these atrocities have in common is that society deemed another group as less than human, as not having value. Ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what abortion does with the unborn. But they are human. They are a true gift from God and they are valued. Federal and state monies and laws should not be used to facilitate this practice. Rather, let's establish laws and use monies to make adoption easier and cheaper and cut the red tape. Let's develop a loving system for unwed mothers. Amen. This issue of abortion is our modern version of slavery, suffrage, and holocaust. Let's be on the right side of history and let's let Texas be in front of that. One last thing, in 1962, there was no law allowing abortion. As my mother was an unwed mother at that time, at the time of my conception, I am grateful and thankful for that. Thank you for your time. Members, questions? Okay, thank you each for your testimony. Um, chair now calls Jessica Templin, Star Finn, David Templin, and Klein Coburn. The next panel will be Rolando Garcia, Carlos Cali, Cheryl Cali, and James Berry. My name is Jessica Templin. I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. A dear friend of mine once found herself pregnant and alone. She was told that her pregnancy was only a clump of cells or a fetus, which we know is merely the Latin word for baby. She chose abortion. She was told not to mourn because there was no life lost. She grieves to this day some 30 years later. In the summer of 2010, I began having intense abdominal pain. For hours, I endured that pain. I was then overwhelmed with a feeling to push. What I saw next will forever be seared on my heart. What I was holding in my hands had little arms, a little body, and little legs. Unbeknownst to me, I had been pregnant. The realization turned to shock 
and the shock to grief, I only thought I had been experiencing pain. Again, unbeknownst to me, the birth control that I was on allowed me to get pregnant and then aborted my baby. I was encouraged to grieve that loss simply because I wanted that child. It was no longer a fetus or a clump of cells, but my baby. I stand before you today as a 31-year-old woman without a womb. I am childless because I believe what doctors told me, and as a result, my ability to have biological children has been taken from me. Please pass this bill so that young women are no longer fooled by doctors into making the worst of decisions that they can never change. Ignore Roe. It does nothing but harm. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ms. Kimberly, can you, is, it's Ms. Kimberly, right? Okay, and is this your husband, David? Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you for being here today for your testimony. Can, can you share a little bit more about your about your story and how it went down? Did you say that it was the birth control that you were on yeah. post-fertilization post or post- Yes, sir. Once I found out and talked to my doctor, they informed me that the type of birth control I was on was one that would continuously thin the lining of my uterus and cause me to shed the baby. But apparently my body rejected it for a certain amount of time until the birth control became strong enough. Okay. So Uh, Pastor David Templin, I am representing myself and testifying for this bill. Uh, first off, I want to thank you all for your uh, compassion that I've seen today, uh, not only to uh, puppies in hot cars, um, but to uh, disabled people as well as, uh, as people who have been uh, assaulted. I, I ask that you have the same compassion uh, for preborn babies. Um, I'm here today to ask you uh, to remember the oath that you took when you took office. Uh, Roe v. Wade is an unconstitutional, outdated, and unscientific court opinion, not law, created by racist white men to oppress black and Latino communities. Texas is known for being defiant for the sake of doing right. But in this case, our government officials have been cowards. They put their heads in the sand and sat idly by as untold millions of babies have been beheaded, dismembered, disemboweled, and chemically burned. Do your job uphold and defend the Constitution, history will record your names as those who either murdered babies or saved them. Yeah. HB 896 not only protects babies in the womb, but also protects young mothers from murdering their babies. I ask you once again, remember your oath, punish wickedness, protect the innocent, not the opposite. Thank you, Chair, and I have a handout. My name is Starfin. Stand for HB 896, unchanged as God gave it to Tony Tinderholt, and I'm for it. We can't ignore Roe v. Wade. In 1973, before Roe v. Wade, abortion was illegal, except a mother could not be prosecuted. This caused the coat hanger abortions because it was illegal for the doctors, but not the mother and they thought they could get away with this. We don't want this dangerous and gruesome practice. HB 896 is rightly not retroactive. Doctors performing triage to prioritize as they try to save both mother and baby are protected. All men are created equal. Creating a separate class for mother and child is discrimination. This is an unjust law that should be removed from Texas Penal Code 1906. If someone sues, we don't have to show up. We say no. What we are doing is constitutional. We have the right to protect life. Let Tinderholt's bill go to the floor as God gave it to him and as prioritized by the Republican Party of Texas. Please send it to the floor for a vote unchanged. Thank you. My name is Klein Coburn, and uh, I represent myself and uh, on the bill. So, 
As I sit before you, I'd like you to consider my thoughts on abortion. 11 million innocent people died during the Holocaust. And so far this year, in only four months, we have had 11,044,826 abortions worldwide. Both incidents claim innocent lives, yet only one is considered mass murder. Not even a century ago did we conclude that it is wrong to kill innocent human beings, but over the past couple of decades, something has changed our mindset, believing that not only killing innocent human beings is acceptable, but that killing off our offspring is legal. Such valuable lives taken away without thought of what they could have become, maybe they could have become Congress members such as yourself, and could have been sitting right next to you, or they could be exchanging ideas with the committee to help better improve our world. A pre-born baby at 10 weeks old already has a heartbeat, moving fingers, uh, limbs, functioning vital, vital organs, and formed facial features at just 10 weeks. I did not know how important a baby looked when it was aborted until I saw a picture. The body was lifeless. Ligaments astray, a coat of crimson blood enveloped the small soul. No one cradling it or embracing it. It lay alone on a cold, gleaming metal table, not to be celebrated, but discarded as if it were trash. My hope is our great state of Texas will lead our nation to speak for the voices that, that can't speak for themselves. If we make abortion illegal in Texas, we will inspire other states to do the same and promote the gift of life. At the climb, just to be clear for the record, you're here on behalf of yourself and your family. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, the chair calls Rolando Garcia, Carlos Cali, Cheryl Cali, and James Berryhill. The next panel will be Michael Deffendahl, David Sims, Lewis James, and Natalie Sims. <coughs> Ethanol, David Sims, Lewis James, and Natalie Sims. Um, Mr. Garcia, uh, if you'll state your name, your affiliation. My name is Rolando Garcia. I'm a Republican precinct chair in Harris County and a member of the Republican platform committee that adopted abolition as a legislative priority, and I am speaking for myself. I would suggest only three questions. One, is there any scenario in which federal judicial overreach is so egregious and so unjust that it would require states to protect the constitutional rights of its citizens by rejecting the federal ruling? I believe the answer is yes. This is a drastic response and a last resort to be used only when fundamental constitutional rights are being systematically violated. Question two, would the scenario in which a federal ruling deprives an entire class of Texans of the right to life warrant such an extraordinary response? Again, I believe the answer is yes. Number three, is there a better way than the 45-year-old status quo in which meaningful pro-life laws are stalled or struck down by the same federal courts that perpetrated this injustice in the first place? I believe the answer is yes, and urge you to vote for HB 896. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Any questions? Okay, the chair calls uh, Carlos Kelly. Kelly, I don't know if I'm saying that right. You correct me if you'll state your name. Yes, my name is Pastor Callie. I am for this bill and I represent myself. I'm here to remind you, gentlemen, that you are God's deacon, that you are his blood avenger to restrain evil and to pour out his wrath on the evildoer in the legislation that you write. I'm here to beg you to stop wielding that sword in vain. Abortion, according to our state penal code, rightly falls under criminal homicide, but it is the only form of criminal homicide that denies justice. 175 children every day are legally killed and denied justice. You will stand before our creator and what you today will be held to your account. In Psalm 82, God tells the rulers, the judges, the legislators, and he asks them, how long will you judge unjustly? How long will you show partiality to the wicked? I am asking you, I'm urging you to promote justice, to pass this, to let it go, otherwise that is sin. May God grant you the strength to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cheryl Kelly. Cheryl Kelly, I'm here representing my 
myself, and I'm in favor of HB 896 going forward unchanged. Um, I would like to applaud Mr. Tenderholt for bringing the bill forth, standing only on the word of God and trusting in his providence and his goodness to stop murdering children in the state of Texas. When I was 15 years old, I went into an abortion clinic in Houston, Texas, and I paid someone to murder my child. And I want to let you know that I wasn't a victim. I wasn't a victim of circumstance. I wasn't a victim of an abortionist. No one forced me to do it. I made the choice my, on my own and stood guilty before God with my child's blood on my hands. The only thing that convinced me to do it is our laws that allow us to murder our children. Please stop this. Please stop this. I'm begging you. Please. Chairman, uh, Williams Committee, thank you for all the time you've invested today. Uh, my name is Jamie Berry Hill. I am the founder and director of Mission Messiah. Uh, Mission Messiah is a 22-year facility that has ministered to women and women with children that have found themselves in dire straits. Many of the situations that we've heard today uh, are where they have been been where Becky was, uh, they've been where Miss Templin was. They, uh, they have been subjects of, of multiple abortions in many cases. And so we work with them uh, for uh, 18 months to work through and, and endeavor to see a new life established within them. But I, I'm here today to tell you the effects of this heinous crime are uh, truly a travesty and have long-term effects. Um, I plead with you today um, that, that we, we look in the context of the Hebrew word hear. And bas basically it has three meanings. It means we hear with our ears, we hear with understanding, and we hear with right action. I would also encourage you that today, when we hear his voice, that we do not resist as they did in the day of provocation and never enter the rest. Because I believe you would all agree with me today. Is that my first? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. I believe with all of my heart that the great measure of unrest that we face in our nation today are the consequences of our 61 million plus murders. I beseech you, I stand with this house bill. Thank you for Thank you each for your testimony. Uh, the chair, chair calls Michael Dettendahl, David Sims, Lewis James, and Natalie Sims. Is Elizabeth Sims Sims with you as well? Yes. Okay, is she here? Yes, she's here. Why, why didn't Elizabeth come up as well? She's also Judah. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. I'm sorry. The, the next the next <laughs> four witnesses, thank you, will be Elizabeth Sims, Nadia, not, not Nadia, Nadia Sims, Mark Lee Dixon, and Sean McGuire. Um, Mr. Deppendahl, let's start with you. Just say your uh, Mr. Chairman, first, thank you for pronouncing it properly. <laughs> Mike, congratulations. Uh, hello, my name is Mike Steffendahl. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. Today, the word choice may be used frequently. I believe a more important word for this discussion is responsibility. Responsibility of consenting adults to understand the consequences of their actions. The responsibility of the medical community to live up to their Hippocratic oath to do no harm and the responsibilities of you, members of this committee, to wade into a very politically charged issue and do the right thing to those yet unborn Texan citizens. Today is not 1973. Medical technology has made enormous advances since that ruling. 
And one of the remarkable things about our system of government is that it is adaptable to necessary change. This is a necessary change. Yes, pregnancy deals with a great deal of choices for expecting parents. One is clearly an acceptable choice. Yes, a woman has many choices when they're pregnant. She also has responsibilities for that child. She has my undying respect for that awesome responsibility. Other questions will be raised, such as teen pregnancy and rape. These are serious matters. They need serious solutions. But two wrongs do not make a right. And killing is definitely a wrong solution. Mr. Chairman, members of this committee, I ask for you to support this bill on behalf of all Texans, both those alive and those awaiting the chance to draw that first breath. Thank you. Chairman Leach, members of the committee, I am DJ Sims, a resident of Fort Worth, Baptist ordained minister, husband and father of nine, and I'm here to support House Bill 896 and represent myself. Uh, 55,000 preborn children are murdered in Texas every year. Uh, this is the only bill put before you that seeks to abolish that murder. Please help us bring justice to the preborn. Give our most weak and most vulnerable Texans equal protection under the law. The truth of God's word says, open thy mouth for the dumb, those who can't speak, and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction, all it says. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who needs your help more than those who can't speak for themselves or are being ripped apart limb from limb by vacuums and forceps? Now let's stop waiting for the Supreme Court to overturn Roe versus Wade. Roe was an unjust ruling. Our government's supposed to have checks and balances. I learned that in grade school. For 46 years, no one has bothered to check or balance the bloody tyranny of the Supreme Court. Let us do it now. For the sake of these Texas children, ignore Roe. We don't need anyone else's permission to protect our state's children. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Chair called Natalie Sims. Hello, I'm Natalie Sims. I'm Fort Worth Baptist Church Baptist I go on to an abortion mill every Saturday and whenever I can during the week. Today, little innocent Texan citizens are being murdered, brutally lipped, ripped limb from limb and taken out of their mother's wounds. I read a story the other day about a woman who took an abortion pill. She was devastated when she delivered her dead child. Planned Parenthood lied to her. They told her it would just be some tissue and that it would be too small to see. It was only an inch big, but even my four-year-old little sister could tell that it was a baby. Abortion mills all over Texas and America are lying to us. Members of the committee, you have a chance to change that. You have the chance to end this Holocaust. Over 60 million babies have been murdered in this country since Roe versus Wade. Pass this bill and let it be the beginning to the end of abortion in America. Thank you for your time. Uh, great testimony, thank you. And I Chair now calls on um, Lewis James. I'm sorry, James Lewis. Well, my name is James Lewis. I'm representing myself. I'm a Texas citizen, a follower of Jesus Christ, who is king, and I am in support of House Bill 896. All human beings.
896 with no exceptions. I go to a close uh, mortuary and try to save lives three days a week over in Shreveport, Louisiana. And that's where a lot of people here in Texas go, uh, up in East Texas, to get across the border. And this is a life that uh, representative um, saw this person uh, at uh, eight, this mother at eight weeks was there for abortion and she changed her mind. And this is the heartbeat of that baby. Wow. Oh, this mother was homeless. We we're helping her out. She is uh, 37 weeks right now. We're giving her a place to live. Doing everything we can to help her out. This is another baby that was saved, baby Karis. And uh, she was born Friday before last. I got a text message today from a mother uh, who gave birth three months ago. And you can see the beautiful picture here. And one last thing I'll say, the very last page here, baby Karis was born Friday before last. This is the mother's testimony. She says, not a day goes by that I thought about I was going to kill my baby, but y'all was there to stop. I just don't know how I feel bringing another blessing into this world. Uh, is abortion is murder, and we've got to treat it as such. Okay, uh, the chair uh, calls on Sean Black. Uh, if you could speak into the microphone. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman, sir, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. My name is Sean McGuire. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, college graduate, and most importantly, a full-time Christian. I'm representing myself. I'm for this bill, HB 896. Uh, testimony, pro-life, anti-choice, abortion abolitionist. Familiar terms? Well, I'm anti-murder. Because that's what this is, murder. I don't need to negotiate the terms with our opposition. We don't need to play by their rules. They need to put by God's rules. The Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, Atheists have lied to us about the interpretation of all of this. These documents fall into the hands, evil hands. They irrefutably become weapons of murder and anarchy. If they fall into the hands of government Christians, they become harbingers of truth and justice. None of these people were ever proved that the Christians among the founding fathers were not talking about the one true God. The Declaration of Independence declares who our God is in the singular with a capital G. And I have seen the Declaration of Independence in the National Archives of Washington, D.C. And the word creator is also with a capital C and singular. Domestic enemies of our nation grossly misrepresent these documents and the entire law. Murder doesn't stop being murder because you claim you have a right to murder. It's time to use God-fearing common sense to see this for exactly what it is, a baby holocaust. Our Constitution never said murder is a right or privilege. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. Please pray for the unborn and for the women that have been lied to about the baby holocaust. Sincerely, Sean McGuire. Thank you, Mr. McGuire. Members, any questions? Before we move on, uh, Mr. Dixon, can I come back to you? I want to ask you a question. I want to thank all of you for your testimony and for your work. You're with Right to Life in East Texas, is that right? Yes, sir. We are the oldest, one of the oldest uh, Right to Life groups that uh, have been in existence since uh, 1976. That's great. And thank you for your work. There's so many great Right to Life groups across the state that are, that are ministering to and ministering and working to meet the needs of women who are, who are faced with here and just you, you do incredibly remarkable work and I want to commend you for that and affirm that. But there's a link on your website. Um, you've got a great website here, but there's a link to um, to other nonprofits, to other organizations, counseling centers, uh, resources, if you will. And one of those is CARE, Christ Centered Abortion Recovery and Education. Yes, sir. And on that website that you reference, and you're directing people to, you say this, it says, many women and, no, sorry, many men and women hide the secret of a past abortion deep in their hearts while suffering devastating consequences. They feel they are alone and that they will carry this secret with them forever. CARE, and this is the, the organization that you're referring to, CARE provides confidential post-abortion recovery studies that help women and men deal with their past to release this shame and to find freedom, joy, and hope through Christ, surrounded by those that have been where they are. 
it then states statistics that show that 43% of women in America had experienced an abortion. Over one in three women and one in three men have been involved in some form or fashion in an abortion. It, the, the website goes on to state that many women struggle for years, for years, post-abortion syndrome, ranging in symptoms from eating disorders, insomnia, alcohol, drug abuse, depression, promiscuity. It then says this, it says, if you feel you've ever recovered from your, if you feel you have never recovered from your abortion experience, CARE offers a safe place to talk with other men and women who know how you feel, who have been where you are. And then it encourages folks, women, to contact that organization. I think that's an incredible call. And I want to go back to something, I think it was Elizabeth, something you said, it might have been you, Nadia, about women who have been lied to. Was that you? Is that you? That, was that your other sister? Okay, all right. And I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And as the chair of the committee, and then Mr. Dix, I'm gonna ask you a question. I mean, I am going somewhere with this. <laughs> I hate abortion. I hate it. I'm agreeing with absolutely everything that's being said here. I hate it. To me, it is absolutely unequivocally murder is the taking of life. I believe actually that Jeremiah 1.5 tells us that life is actually created before conception. God says that he knew us before we, was, before we were created. I'm going to be honest for those of you who are here, who are here and then Mr. Dixon, I want to ask you to comment on this. What I'm struggling with from a policy perspective is what is the best way to meet those women who have been lied to at the point of their need. All these services that CARE are recommending, confidential post-abortion recovery, I don't want those recovery efforts to take place with a woman who's behind bars. And that's what I fear this bill does at this point. Now, we're going to continue on with the testimony. I'm learning a lot and, and appreciate all of you for being here. But, Mr. Dixon, I want to know how you can take the position you're taking on this bill, which I respect and appreciate, and then also at the same time re refer women to these post-abortive counseling services, which I think are wonderful and new. One in three women in this country have experienced an abortion. Can you comment on that? Absolutely. So while I'm on the sidewalk, I have these little cards from CARE, and every woman who's had an abortion, I give them that card. And I let them know that we're there for them. We're actually helping someone in Baton Rouge right now and in um, Texarkana, Texas, that have had an abortion. We're helping with aftercare, connecting them. Several people we referred to to uh, the care Bible studies. And so that's a part of things. But when we're on that sidewalk and we're trying to save lives, we don't say, go ahead and have an abortion and God will forgive you. Amen. But we plead with them not to have that abortion. And the reality is, these uh, these testimonies right here, these women, if it was illegal for them to have an abortion, then they wouldn't even go there. And we actually treat abortion as murder, which, which it really, really is. And I understand the, the pushback with the, uh, the pushback of, as far as like the, the criminalization factor. But the thing is, ultimately, if it's, if I'm just as valuable as baby care, so I got to help name over cheeseburgers at Papa Cita's <laughs> along with Baker. If I'm just as valuable as she was, if I'm just as valuable as baby legend was when I met baby legend with eight weeks on that sidewalk, then we've got to say that the killing of baby legend or the killing of baby care is, is, should be treated just as, as, as like the killing of myself or anyone else in this room. Are they equal or are they not equal? That's what it's about. And I, and I think on, on that point, can you tell me how you reconcile charging a woman with capital murder, subjecting her to the death penalty for doing exactly that which you're opposed to? Can you restate the question? So under the law, a woman could be subjected to the death penalty. So, for 
are you saying that you're okay with subjecting a woman to the death penalty, killing her through government sanction, death penalty, for exactly that which you're saying that she needs to bear? You're okay with killing somebody for her? No, I understand what you're saying. Killing an innocent wife deserves the death penalty, yes. So you're no, okay, and that's what I was trying to under, understand. But you're okay with killing a woman? I'm okay She's a with justice being served in a court of law. And that, that I believe people who do, uh, who kill other people, that as far as the death penalty, I think that is reasonable. So it's reasonable to kill a woman. And so that's what I'm trying to... It's reasonable to kill someone who has killed another human being. At Hope Medical Group for Women in Shreveport, they kill 20 babies every Tuesday, 30 babies every Thursday, 50 babies every Saturday. One of the abortionists, Dr. Del Ballman, delivered baby, uh, twins down the road, and then he killed 27 babies by himself. And so Do I appreciate I your testimony. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to understand in terms of your perspective, and I think the perspective of many of the people that are in this room. Um, and so I think that helps me understand. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, Nadia and Elizabeth, you're still my favorite witness. <laughs> so, uh, awesome. um, Pastor, to continue on that line of questioning from Chairman Leach and Representative Niabe, you know, we do have mitigating circumstances in criminal law. That's why we have murder, and then that's why we have manslaughter, right? So do you see any difference in culpability for a woman uh, Natalie and uh, Nadia, uh, Natalie said earlier, when being lied to, not having all the facts. Do you see any difference in culpability with a woman who has an abortion, doesn't have all of the facts, and doesn't exactly know what they're doing, being charged with murder, as compared to, to a doctor who you were just talking about, absolutely knows what they're doing, been trained, medically should know. Should that be a higher standard of culpability than a woman who doesn't understand what she's going through, or do you feel like they're equally culpable, even though they may not understand the same thing? From my experience, three days a week outside of Hope, and I, I spend time outside of other abortions too, but these women, I mean, they open up and they, they know what they're doing. Amen. They know that it's taking an innocent life. And the statements that I hear are statements of it's not a matter of when life begins, but it's a matter of the quality of that life. What about that life was tragic poor. and coerced into having abortions? What That's about a women who horrible thing. It is a horrible thing. We can agree on that. What do we do with those women? Well, love them. That's some of the finer details of this. No, 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 no. Because, because under we the, love the bill, a woman who is coerced and trafficked and driven by her pimp to an abortion clinic without a cell phone, with no freedom whatsoever, and is, and is walked into that abortion clinic and said, you will get an abortion. You know, that, that's, that's not, not her. In this law. You cannot, you cannot talk, sir, seriously. That will kill the bill if someone talks out of line. So... Please answer my question. If someone handed me a gun and said, you better go kill this person, I would have a choice to make. That's right. And I hope to God that I would choose not to murder an innocent human being. I'm asking you to make a, we're, we're here for crafting laws. Right. And for a woman that is coerced into having an abortion, the text of the bill is very clear. A woman who ends the life which is recognized under this bill is, um, as Representative Miyabe has correctly pointed out, potentially liable for the <coughs> murder. Yes, there are uh, extenuating circumstances, and there, you know, these are highly factual scenarios. Juries and judges will make these decisions ultimately, but we have to be very careful in how we, uh, very, uh, how we craft the legislation to make sure it's directly targeted at what we're getting at. And there are thousands of stories. We have heard them in this building of women who are trafficked and coerced and forced against their will to have abortion. And Planned Parenthood, they don't care. They'll perform them. I want to hold them responsible. Yeah, both. Chairman White. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, you know, on the uh, criminal justice side, we get a lot of these discussions of law apart. And, and it feeds uh, prayed men. And, and let me tell you, I don't have any problem. Okay, I, I, I signed on at least as a co-op. All right, but I think something needs to be said. Uh, we're hearing very, very great testimony, very compelling, very sincere testimony. 
Thanks. But several years ago, and some of you were here, uh, we had um, a big old program in the special session. And, and so we just had a few bills in the sessions, in, during the session, in special sessions. So I had a lot of time to immediately pick the phone and, and listen to feedback. And I talked to many of these women who got an abortion. Obviously, they were <coughs> probably against my vote. Okay, but almost all of them had a common refrain. They wanted to take the baby to term, but the guy who fathered it bailed out or drove her to the um, to, to abortion clinic. So um, I would like, as a man, I would like to know, and you don't have to tell me this tonight because we don't want to be here all night, right? What are we going to do to round up those people? Okay, because at some point in time, and it's four or five men up here, you know, what are we going to hold these men responsible for putting these uh, women in these situations? I don't hear very much talk about it. That's it. Everybody has to stand before the Lord in and, 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 and judgment. But um, I'm really grappling with. Uh, these dudes that are driving these women in, husbands in some instances, compelling them and, and, and leaving them, you know, abandoning them. So um, uh, there's a lot of finger pointing going around. There's a lot of soul searching and navel gazing. We need to look at these, if, 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 look at these men, these men, all of us as men need to start stepping up and standing up and being men too. Okay. Yeah. Amen. I think Chairman White just hit the nail on the head, right? I think that's the biggest problem. And I've wondered in this bill, I mean, should we make those men an accessory, right? I mean, are they as culpable in the crime as the others? And if we're going to go after that, we need to look there too. But uh, I, I, that was very well said. Thank you for bringing up. I just want to add that I think Representative Kendra Holt, um, you know, she's made very clear on the record today that he is not taking out this language. Right? I think the 400 plus individuals who came to testify in support of the legislation would be very upset if we took out that language, right? Yeah, and, and that's unfortunate. I, 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 I'm with the former team testimony. I do rep believe Representative Kinder Holt was this close to filing a committee substitute that he drafted, and, and for whatever reason, it's not to represent yeah. the audience. Uh, but the members of this committee um, are The chair will now call Tanya Robertson, Judas Sims, Jorge Avales, uh, Arbelez, I'm sorry, and James Dickey. Is James here? All right. Um, the next group will be David Capps, Jeff Haas, Richard Gertz, and uh, Janet Flynn. Jorge, let's start with you. Go state your name and your position on the bill. My name is Jorge Arbelais. Uh, I'm, I'm a represent, I represent myself and I support the bill for the equal protection under the law of our preborn sons and daughters. Science and scripture and reason tell us all that the human life begins at conception. And abortion ends that innocent life. Abortion is murder. We have a depraved indifference towards these babies. I was guilty of this myself, and I, I viewed them as other people's children until I asked myself, what if, what if that was my son Ethan or my daughter Becca that was being murdered or slaughtered? I was given new eyes and a greater compassion for these babies as I saw them as my own and started to fight for them with all of my heart. And that is why I'm here today, to plead with each one of you to, uh, for their lives. I pray you will also see them in your own, as your own, 
reject indifference, accept responsibility for them, and lead courageously to approve this bill and and end the murder of our sons and daughters. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. My name is Tanya Robertson, and I serve on the State Republican Executive Committee representing Senate District 11, and I'm here to testify in favor of HB 896 for myself, representing myself and the Republican Party of Texas. In 2016, the Republican State Convention passed the abolition of abortion as one of its three legislative priorities. In 2018, it happened again. 89% of over 8,000 delegates voted in favor of this priority. Those delegates were elected by tens of thousands of other Republicans being sent to that convention to represent them. So I'm, I'm pleading with the committee to vote this bill out of committee and allow it to be voted on the floor like the convention delegates would like for it to be done. And I also have a personal story. Um, I'm from Louisiana, and in the early 80s, my sister at 14 got pregnant. Abortion was illegal in Louisiana. My sister was driven to Texas. My family feels that loss every day. I truly believe that if it would have been legal in Texas, it would not have happened. I'd have a niece or a nephew that I could be proud of and help raise. So from a personal point, um, every life matters. Every life. Okay. And Judah? Yeah. Hi, Judah. How are you, buddy? Good. Good. If you'll state your name and tell us how old you are, okay, go for it. My name is Judah Sin. I am eight years old, and I'm representing myself for House Bill 8. Nine-six. Those women are just brought in there by men. They come in there, they cuss at us, they just don't want help. That's why we need more people out there. I go out there every Saturday and once a week. I just want to say that they're getting, the babies are getting murdered. sit on the dais with us for a few minutes. Judah, come sit here next to me. Jason Storms, and Timothy Ullman. Let's start with you, uh, Mr. Caps. Good evening. Um, my name is David Caps. I'm uh, representing myself, um, and I'm uh, in support for this House Bill uh, 896. 
This house bill provides equal protection for the most helpless people in our midst. The pre-born child, which we were all once, is being discriminated against in our own penal codes. <clears throat> we define the penal code defines a child right, it defines murder right, but then it gives this exception clause, which is which is horrific. It tells you it says that unless a mother wants to kill a child, then she can then she can. <coughs> And God knows and sees each child. This bill provides equal protection for these children from, sadly, mothers who want to kill them. It lines us with the Constitution, which you swore to uphold, to not deprive a person of their life. We need to ignore Roe because it's unconstitutional, a court opinion. So I'm asking you to be bold and do us right and allow this bill to move forward for the sake of all these children that God sees. And I have one more question. Which is worse, criminalizing a woman who murders their child are allowing a law to continue to turn women to murderers. That's right. Thank you. Jeff. All right. Thank you, Honorable Representatives. My name is JR, and I'm here testifying uh, on behalf of myself. Uh, members, it's my conviction that this bill is the most consistent piece of legislation in establishing equal protection for all who are created in the image of God. This inalienable right that all men are created equal has been inconsistent with our culture and our laws ever since it was first drafted by our founders. Praise God that this right has been refining our culture and its laws ever since. As we look back at our history, we rightly cringe when we think of the times when entire people groups were treated unjustly under our law. Praise the Lord that many of these atrocities have been eradicated through the establishing of equal protection for all men regardless of their skin color. Our work is not done yet. All people are not equal in the state of Texas. We continue to discriminate based on age. Today, science confirms that which scripture has taught for thousands of years, that life begins at conception. The Texas Penal Code in Chapter 19 even upholds this truth and protects pre-born children from the time of conception. Why then are 55,000 lives ended prematurely in this state every year? HB 896 would establish equal protection for all humans, regardless of their age, even protection from their mothers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am Richard Gertz, representing myself in favor of HB 896. You know, in Psalm 139, we find some of the most powerful words in the Bible about God's hand in creating life. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Scientific body of evidence overwhelmingly concludes that life begins at conception because a unique DNA comes together through the egg and the sperm uniting and guess what? Eight days later, sophisticated equipment can detect a heartbeat. The emotion we experienced earlier in Dr. Leach's ter testimony happens most every day in a pregnancy center. I'll share a story with you. A mom on her way to an abortion clinic to have an abortion performed on her daughter stopped by our pregnancy center to have an ultrasound. When she saw the picture of the baby, in that womb, she exclaimed, that's my grandbaby. I look forward to celebrating the day when the economics of no more abortion drive Planned Parenthood and other abortion clinics out of our state. Yeah. A vote of affirmation for this bill is a vote for our eternal souls, for the soul of our state of Texas, and the soul of our nation, one nation under God. Thank you. Hi, my name is Janet Flynn. I am representing myself, and I'm testifying for Bill 896. As a director of a crisis pregnancy center that I once was, I got to see both sides of abortion and its effects. We had a 50-ish 50 50-ish 50 lady come in. She had a legal abortion 30 years previously, and she had kept it secret all that time out of shame and guilt that she felt. Her hair and her clothing and everything were very unkept. Kept. She could, you could tell by her appearance that she was full of self-hatred. For two hours this lady vomited out her pain as she told her story of her abortion and hating herself for it. Two, two weeks later she returned 
and we didn't even recognize her. After ridding herself of her secret, she was well-dressed, had an attractive hairstyle, and carried herself with dignity. She showed her unconditional love. We showed her unconditional love and listened to her story with sympathy. If abortion had not been legal, she likely would not have had that 30 years of torment. Yeah, and I just want to thank this lady. She's uh, from Polk County. Uh, drove about five hours last night in some harrowing yeah. weather mm -hmm. to get here. I want to thank you for your um, your testimony and your stand for life. And we're honored to represent you back in South East Texas. So, thank you, members of the other party. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you. <laughs> Chair will call uh, Eric Ellinger, Candace Ellinger, Jason Storms, and Timothy Ullman. The next panel will be Lisa Kammerer, Holly Phillips, Michael Gobart, and Robert Green. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, my name is Eric Ellinger, on behalf of myself, speaking for House Bill 896. This bill is bold and challenging, deserving the support of each person that values human life, even if that life is still in its most vulnerable form. Rather than toy with the fringes of the abortion debate, it strikes at the heart of the matter. Does every human life deserve equal protection under the law? Our founding fathers answered this question in the Declaration of Independence when we ceded a portion of our natural rights to form this American Republic. We did not toss from ourselves the yoke of responsibility. Each of us has to secure the safe conduct of those who follow in our footsteps. This bill takes the first crucial step in repenting from the injustice that the Supreme Court has temporarily imposed on nearly five generations of Texans. It's been asked here tonight, how can we claim to have mercy on a child but not the mother? I said you had heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not <clears throat> murder. But I say unto you that whosoever hates his brother is guilty of murder. I cannot say that I grew up with a perfect love for my brothers. I will admit that I may even have told them that I hated them. I was guilty, but I did not act. If I had, I would expect to be treated accordingly. <laughs> sure. This bill, bill heeds the silent, stifled screams of the unborn child, whether they be male or female, physically or mentally challenged, loved or unloved. Let's take this chance to make Texas a sanctuary state for the unborn, who might not have a vote yet, but by supporting this legislation, you have the chance to give them a voice. Candace Ellinger and with myself in support of this bill. This weekend I spent it with visiting my newest nephew, he's two weeks old, and there's a game that his older sisters and brothers like to play, taking turns listening to each other's heartbeat. You first give them a good tickle to make sure their heart rate is up and pumping good, and then you lay them down on the floor, lower your ear to their chest, and listen to the steady thumping amidst the eruption of squeals and giggles. As soon as they know you have heard their heartbeat, they excitedly struggle to listen to your own. This is what love and life is, and this bill supports that. We need children to teach us, especially mothers, what love really looks like. I challenge you today to find a young child and a heartbeat to cherish and play this game with them. Right now, as a state, we are silencing these hearts instead of cherishing them. Our God-given responsibility to equally protect life is too important to keep playing around with mediocre bills while pretending to be pro-life. We do not have the moral option as a state of not supporting this bill. Let's stop resorting to allowing death as some sort of solution to help those in difficult situations and learn to value and love life in its purest form from the mouth of Davis. Assistant Director of the National Pro-Life Organization, Abolitionist Organization, Operation Save America. Um, 
start with a personal story that this gentleman brought up earlier. I had a girlfriend in high school who had an abortion. I was very much consenting to that abortion. We both professed to be pro-life. Uh, if I had told her I would stand by her, she would not have done it. But I was a selfish, cowardly young man at that time of my life. I turned my back on her and I turned my back on my own child. I'm thankful for God for his great mercy and his grace. That abortion ruined her life. She was never the same person. So you'd ask, should she be punished? Should she be facing prosecution for homicide? Well, I will tell you who should have been prosecuted, me. I was guilty as an accomplice in the murder of my own child, and I should have been prosecuted accordingly. Mothers and fathers, parents, right now in Texas can be charged with parental neglect, parental abuse, even parental homicide. When we see the tragedy of parents taking the life of their own children, it's because mothers and fathers have a duty to love and protect their children. That responsibility doesn't start when they're born, but it starts when they're conceived. Here's a fact my girlfriend and I never would have been faced, if we knew we been, would have been facing homicide charges, we never would have aborted that child. That child would be alive today. I have a 22 year old little child that I could celebrate life with right now that's not here. The law is a deterrent to crime. We shouldn't think of this only as a matter of putting a woman on the stand. We should think of this as a great deterrent. Men and women would not think of doing this if we stood firm on the law and provided equal protection for these children. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Timothy Ullman. I'm here to testify for House Bill 896 in favor of it. And what I have to say in agreement with this gentleman to my right is that while it is certainly true that the woman, that our law should reflect that the woman is responsible for killing her child, it is also equally true that everybody else involved in this is responsible. And I believe that just as our law says, if two people shot one person and they die, or one person held them down while the other person stabbed, both of them are culpable for murder. <coughs> That's the same thing. If more than one person is murdering the baby, they're all culpable for the murder of the child. And I would also urge y'all that you don't delay to try and get a more perfect bill when God clearly says that murder is wrong. And if you pass this, I will stop allowing these people. The chair calls Lisa Kimmerer and Colin Phillips. Michael Gobart and Robert Green. The next witnesses will be Damon Rambo, Sharon Armby, Dorinda Johnson, and Matthew Trevella. Hi, my name is Lisa Kimmer. I am representing myself and I am testifying for this bill, 896. On August of 2001, I had an abortion. My friend drove me to the abortion clinic in Houston, Texas. As we approached the gate, there were protesters holding signs that read, murder. How can I be a murderer? If abortion is legal, how can it be wrong? God's word says in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that appears right, but the end leads to death. I went in for an ultrasound, and the lady turning the screen away from me told me, if you saw it, you would keep it. The next day, I went the next day, something went very wrong. I felt my baby move, fighting for its life. And just like that, it was done. I found myself in the deepest, darkest hole that seemed inescapable. I took drugs and it caused a seizure. I woke up in the emergency room, the doctor telling me, you could have died. I couldn't help but wish I didn't wake up. I have lived my life for 17 years in silence from the shame and the guilt that I carried. I am no longer a slave to my past, and that is why I am silent no more. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, committee members, for giving us an opportunity to speak. My name is Michael Gobart. I represent myself. Uh, I'm in support of HB 896. I'm a Texas citizen, husband, father, and business owner in Wilson County. The Texas Constitution, Article 1, Bill of Rights, Section 3A, secures equality under the law, both in protection and prosecution. Our inalienable rights, as outlined in the Declaration of Independence, 
given to all men by our Creator includes that right to life. HB 896 would end the unjust and prejudiced violation of preborn children's God given right to life. In a state known to have fought some of the world's most historic battles for freedom, we are here today appealing for you to support a bill which makes the mutilation of babies illegal and upholds their right to life. Vote to stop the discrimination based upon age. Be on record opposing the genocide and more than 50,000 children murdered legally each year in Texas. I'm urging you to exercise your office in a manner which reflects your duty to our creator. Take action which reflects your oath to uphold, defend, and in this case, restore the fundamental unalienable right to life. Defend those weakest among us. Vote in a manner which honors our creator and the one who judges over all. Support HB 896 without amendment. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Bob Green. Uh, I am a precinct chair here in Travis County, and I am definitely in favor of HB 896. I'm merely representing myself. Uh, there is a word for the mass murder of the innocent. This is gentleman just mentioned. It's called genocide. And that's what we are dealing with today with the number of uh, abortions that are being conducted. Um, I, I thank the members of the committee who are present here today. I really wish that the other members had been here today to hear this testimony of all of these people. It's been extremely powerful. I only have one question that I think every member of this committee, every member of the House, and every member of the Texas Senate should, should think about and try to answer. At what point in the gestation period of a human being in view does the constitutional right to life of that child get superseded by a woman? Amen. The right to terminate that life for convenience is birth control. You have to ask yourself that question. And I, I support, I wish this bill would go out and give it the opportunity to have a vote on the House floor and see where the members stand. Thank you. Holly Phillips. I'm representing myself. I've never done anything like this before. I've never even been to anything like this before. But I could not not come. In 1990, I was supposed to go to a Right for Life uh, march, and I slept it because I didn't want to go. I wanted to sleep. And it was 6.20 in the morning, and between 6.20 and 6.40, I fell asleep and had a dream. I'm just going to read you the words of the dream or tell you the words of the dream. Once every minute, from deep within my soul, I heard a voice crying out, Mommy, please don't. I knew who those voices were, but it seemed so unreal that I could feel their pain. And then they said, Mommy, if you could just listen, if you could just believe the one who breathed his life in me he cares for both of us. Please, don't listen to them when they tell you there's only one cure. My heart beats just like yours. That dream changed my life, and I've never been able to look past that sense. When you feel the heartbeat of a child, and you can't even protect yourself because you're Superseded, God takes over your sleep, and you're imposed upon, you know, you just don't forget something like that. And I do thank you all for letting us come here. We do this respectfully. I do this respectfully. All right, the chair calls. Damon Rambo, Sharon Armkey, Miranda Johnson, and Matthew Trevala. Um, the next panel is Lynette Lucas, Michael Hoover, Johnny Green, and Jacob Miller. Uh, let's start with uh, Jesus Rambo. 
My name is Damon Rambo. I'm the pastor of First Baptist Church Markham. I'm also the Precinct 8 Chair in Matagorda County for the Republican Party of Texas. Um, I would, had a whole different thing here that I was going to talk about, but instead I figured I would do some cleanup listening to some of the testimony. So, uh, first of all, we were talking a while ago about the uh, about the about uh, all of these bad cases where women would be forced into abortion uh, made by their pimp or things like that, where uh, uh, they would do an abortion under duress. And I just want to say, this bill that is so masterfully crafted by Mr. Tenderholt, its beauty is it's about equality. It's about uh, equal protection under the law. And so by eliminating those statutes, all of the, all of the things that, that grant protection to a, to a person in that situation would also apply to the mother. There's already in, chapter, in Title II, Chapter 8.05, uh, um, a, a, an exception for duress. Um, if you are if you are forced into a, a room, you know, to commit something against your will, there's already exceptions. There's, there's also already uh, clauses under the law uh, regarding uh, uh, accomplices and things like that. So those things are already addressed in the law. The way that this bill is written, because it eliminates, it, it simply eliminates the exception and says, hey, this is just like everything else. Man, I wish I had more than a minute. <laughs> Chairman and members of the committee, my name is Duranda Carroll Johnson, and I'm here representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill, HB 896. At ages 7 and 15, I lost both parents to medical conditions, but the devastation left me rebellious, confused, and looking for love to ease my broken heart. Pregnant in high school left me feeling ashamed and regretful. At age at 16, entering both womanhood and motherhood, long before adulthood, it was very scary. Needless to say, in cooperation with the, 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 this father of the child, my first two years of college resulted in two abortions, one year after the other, and then decades of walking in guilt and sin and shame, carelessness and ignorance to blame. But as uh, the Psalms tell us, I've learned over the years that we're all included. We're all, as Psalms tell us, we're all, including the unborn that deserves the same chance to live as all of us here have been given this chance. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made in God's own image. And God is the only giver of life. And he never gave us the right to take a life. So why did I, and why should we all, have a right to take a life before it ever had a chance, before it ever had a chance to live out its own lifetime before its death. Murder is sin. So I desire to spend the rest of my lifetime to help get get make it right for others that they don't go through this road. But because of the redemption of Jesus Christ, I know I'm healed and free. Amen. Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Yes, I am Matthew Chihuahua. I'm a pastor and the author of the book, The Doctrine of the Lesser Magistrate, and I am here to speak in support of this bill. Uh, the preborn have been waiting for the interposition of the Lesser Magistrates for 46 years now. I have no doubt about this. The Supreme Court must be defied. Our founders did not throw off a monarchy to replace it with an oligarchy. Your duty in the face of murder is not to hide behind the off refrain of the Supreme Court has ruled, so all I can do is obey. Your duty is interposition on behalf of the freeborn. SCOTUS has decided to impose social transformation without representation. You make laws as representatives of the people, then the SCOTUS tramples them. SCOTUS must be defied by the states. Congress will not do it through a weakling. Your interposition for the preborn is needed and necessary. You also have a duty to establish justice. All parties to a crime of murder should be prosecutable. Women are not victims. 
Having spent countless hours outside these death camps, the vast majority are not victims. The few that are, um, once this is outlawed, there is no place to take them to because the death camps no longer exist. And of course, you have the discretion of the prosecutor in any murder case. The Supreme Court stated in Roe, in Texas, the woman is not a principal or an accomplice with respect to an abortion upon her. If the fetus is a person, why is the woman not a principal or an accomplice? Unquote. The court was making clear there, don't say the preborn child is a person and abortion is murder if the woman is not culpable for prosecution. This bill simply does for the preborn what is already equal protection for all of us that are postborn. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, members of All right. Thank you. All right. The, uh, the chair calls Lynette Lucas, Lynette Lucas, Michael Hooper, Johnny Green, and Jacob Miller. The next panel will be Emily Draymond, <coughs> Brett. Villiers, Wilfred Lobig, and Renee Davis. Uh, Lynette Lafarge. I'm Johnny Green. I'm representing myself, and I'm here to testify for this bill. I've submitted too few copies of my original two-minute testimony, but I've entered it into the record, and I ask you to please read it. Um, I spent hours preparing and practicing that testimony, but now I feel my short time is better spent attempting to address some of the concerns I've heard tonight. Sex trafficking is a horrendous evil that grieves my soul deeply, just like the evil of abortion. I'm sure you're well aware how organizations like Planned Parenthood aid and abet sex traffickers, Amen. covering up their crimes in order to maintain a steady flow of business. Traffickers depend on abortion. What better way to help reduce sex trafficking than by ending abortion? As has been said earlier, most women know exactly what they're doing. Many women are strongly pressured to murder their babies, but this does not excuse the act of murder. If a woman is dragged into an abortion clinic, one, she can kick and scream, and two, the, the woman ultimately has to consent to the abortion. If she is ultimately forced against her will, then she's not culpable, and she could bring charges against the perpetrator. And finally, all these special circumstances would surely be taken into consideration in any cr criminal proceedings, just as they are in any homicide trial. Uh, of course, men who coerce murder should be prosecuted as accomplices. All responsible parties should face justice. 
Also, loving women does not mean allowing them to commit murder and diminishing the weight of that sin. Is it, it is more loving to, one, don't allow them to commit that grave sin in the first place, and then two, after that sin does happen, don't diminish it. How can people be, con be convinced of their need of the grace of Jesus if they don't understand the weight of their sin? This is the very beginning of the gospel. You can start the snowball rolling toward the end of abortion in America. Do not pass the buck to another state. Texas should lead the way. Every day you delay hundreds more are slaughtered. Don't delay any longer. It's time to end abortion now. Thank you. Yes. I had to follow him. A lot of my stuff echoes his. <laughs> my name is Jacob Miller. I'm representing myself, and I'm testifying for this bill. At least four of you today have shown hearty approval of comments made today in approval of this bill. Those nods of approval, the smiles and leanings, they mean nothing if this bill isn't passed. Amen. Your heart will be greater displayed in your vote than in your meaningless smiles and approving comments. Chairman Leach said, what is the best way to meet these women who have been lied to and went through with it? Every individual is different, and God can only truly know what is absolutely necessary. What I can tell you is what won't work, and that is not lying to them about what actually happened. The law in its current state does that. God will not approve of that. Representative White, who's not here, said, What's going to happen to those men concerning the men who drive their wives to a paid assassin? With the way things are now, without this bill, those men are justified in their action, and you have no way of calling for anything to happen to them. So your words and compassion are empty. The government is given the duty to, by God to carry a sword. Are you going to wield that sword? On judgment day, all of you will give an account for those who are under your authority. What would you say to your king? What would you say to King Jesus, Jeff? There was a question. Thank you. Um, the chair calls Emily Rayburn, Brett DeVilliers. Thank you all. Wilfred Lobig and Renee Davison. The next panel will be Anna Marie Gervais, Austin James, Scarlett Clay, and Cindy Davis. I have to go very temporarily lay out a bill and then the committee, but we're going to do a crowd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. not some arbitrary point during pregnancy or after birth. At conception, the unborn fetus starts the first stage of the development, during which time appearances and size change to the local point. But at no point does that fetus change from something other than a human into a human. A fetus is a human person with worth and rights, and the killing of a fetus is murder. Having a baby, especially an unwanted one, is not easy, and no amount of difficulty, oh, but no amount of difficulty or unwantedness makes one person's life worth less than another's. As political representatives, we have an obligation to protect the lives of every human in Texas, even if those persons are inconvenient or unwanted. I implore you, please do not belittle the value of human life by allowing Texas to continue to legally kill those who cannot defend themselves. Do you have any questions? No. Thank you. And uh, Renee, uh, if you would like to testify, tell us who you are, who you're with, mm -hmm. and your position on the bill. Hello, my name is Renee Davidson. I'm representing myself, my husband, and my four children. My daughter will be testifying here shortly, and I am testifying for this bill. Babies are being murdered in Texas every day, and we have let it go on for far too long. Allow me to point out a couple of things from our own penal code, and I believe Representative Tenderholt mentioned this earlier. It defines an individual in section 1.07 as a human being who is alive, including an unborn child at every stage of gestation, from fertilization <coughs> until birth. In section 19.02, it gives us an exception for uh, abortion. <coughs> the Texas Penal Code 
contradicts itself and it goes against God's command, thou shalt not kill, when it makes an exception for the abortionists, mothers and fathers, and pharmacists, as is laid out in section 19. Either an unborn child is an individual or he is not. If an un unborn child is in fact an individual, why, do, why is murder acceptable? As a mother of four, let me assure you, they are individuals even in the womb. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate the testimony. Any questions? No. Thank you all for being here to testify. Uh, the chair will now call up uh, Anna Marie Gervais, Austin James, Scarlett Clay, and Sydney Davison. The next group will be Sonia Ganella, Monte Barte, Lisa McMillan, and Mimi Barreras. My name is Sydney Davison. I am representing myself and I am testifying for HB 896. I want abortion to be illegal because it is murder. Babies are being ripped apart in the womb. I know I'm just 12 years old and I have a passion for saving babies. I go to an abortion mill two days a week. I have people cuss me out and flip me off, but I don't care about that. All I want is abortion to be legal. The women that go in the abortion mills and Planned Parenthood think they don't have a choice. Proverbs 31.8 says, Open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all that as are appointed to, to destruction. That is why I'm here today. Proverbs 6.17 says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. That includes the doctor that works at the abortion mill. A lady said to my mom one day that it is child abuse to bring me and my brothers to the abortion mill, even though she was bringing her daughter there to kill her grandchild. I want to be there for the babies. That is why I want abortion to be illegal. Thank you for allowing me to testify. Thank you. My sincere prayer that going forward, an overwhelming majority of formerly condemned unborn Texas children will survive their mother's pregnancy because under your leadership, the Texas legislature will have their backs as well the, and afford them the same care and consideration that you have shown to other victims here today. Any questions for me? Thank you both for being here. We're sticking it out. So we appreciate it. All right. Next to chair, uh, chair will call up Sonia Ganella, Monte Barte, Lisa McMillan, and Mimi Barreras. On deck is uh, Matthew Ullman, Adrian Magnum, Barbara Miller, and Dewell Garcia. 
So we'll have Sonia. Why don't you go first? Good evening. My name is Sonia Ganello, and I'm representing myself. I'm a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm here to testify for HB 896. Because it treats abortion as murder, it provides equal protection and justice for all human beings from fertilization and criminalizes abortion without exception. I speak as a woman who uh, experienced incest as a child. As a teenager, I was raped and I conceived a child. And because abortion was legal, many conspired with me to shed the innocent blood of this unwanted child. We often hear testimonies of women sharing that they've been exploited or feel that they're victims of abortion. We also hear many women sharing they're proud of their abortions. But I'm here to say abortion is not about women. Abortion is about those who cannot speak for themselves and continue to be slaughtered in our state, only with the consent of their mothers, under the current law, in rebellion against Almighty God. And we all share in the blood guilt. Jesus Christ came to save sinners, not victims, or the proud. Abortion will never be unthinkable in our culture as long as it is permissible in our laws. The law may not change our hearts, but by God's design it works to restrain evil and points us to the lawgiver who alone is the heart changer. It is true women have not historically been criminalized, but that does not make it right. God's word says, he who sheds man's blood by man the civil government, his blood will be shed. As a woman, I support HB 896 without reservation. It demonstrates fear of the Lord and turning from evil. You have before you the only legislation that will put an end to this institutionalized evil. I call on you to repent with us and to work diligently to abolish abortion in Texas. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you for that testimony. Any questions? All right. Uh, Lisa? My name is Lisa McMillan. I'm representing myself and I'm testifying for this bill. Okay. When I tell you that I am pro life, I mean not only for the baby, but also for the mother. If we have a section in this bill that says that the mother is punishable by death if she performs an abortion, I believe that should be removed. I believe that life is life. And I question how many astronauts, preachers, school teachers, presidents, carpenters, have we lost to abortion? <coughs> I was faced with this decision 31 years ago, and now have a son in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And I am very proud that he's serving our country. The death of Lacey and Peter, uh, Lacey and Anna Connor Peterson led to the passage of the Unborn Victims of Violence Act. This act recognized Lacey Peterson's unborn baby, Connor Peterson, as a living human being, and allowed his father to be charged and sentenced with Connor's murder. This is the precedent that we should follow in Texas, and we should make abortion illegal. We live in a city that thinks it's okay and wants the animal shelter to be 100% no kill. Okay, that's good, but what about the unborn children? We need to be their voice. This evil needs to stop now. There should never be abortions, much less a third term abortion, to where it's okay to kill a human being once it's delivered and free from an abortion. Thank you. Please tell your son thank you for a service to our country. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I will. Of course, we should do the murder witnesses. All right. Me? Yes. All right. You'll tell us who you are, your position on the bill, and who you represent. Okay, my name is Mimi Barreras, and I'm testifying for House Bill 896 and for myself. And I want to tell you a slightly different angle to this story. Um, about 10 years ago, my sister gave birth to my nephew, Matthew. And in spite of all the testing in the world that we have available now, it was not apparent until birth that Matthew was born with Down syndrome. I don't know if you know a child that has chromosomal disorders personally, but if you don't, you should because it may change your views a little bit. You see, I firmly believe these children are blessed with something that we are missing. Matthew's name means gift from God. His quote-unquote scientific abnormalities are simply a blur to all who know him. 
But so many children like Matthew who are gifts from God will never have a chance at life and love because the statistics show that we deny them that God-given and constitutional right to life. I speak today for the Matthews who are mostly disposed of in the name of convenience. I believe that abortion should never be an option and that all humans in and out of the womb, bodily perfect or not, are already, are already, already given by God in our Constitution the inalienable right to life and that it is of utmost importance that we establish that firmly as a state. Questions? I appreciate your comments on that. Uh, I was raised with a special needs individual. Uh, my father's older brother uh, was not, he did not have any kind of a problem in the womb. He was healthy and happy. But in 1936, in East Texas, in a small town where there was one doctor who was just a general practitioner and he developed COVID. Uh, and he had a 107 degree fever. And it just kind of it really retarded him. Uh, and uh, he lived with me all my life until he, <clears throat> and my, my brother and my sister until he died about four years ago. But the gifts he gave us and that we would not have had, that we would not, not have experienced had we not had Tom. His name was Aubrey. We called him all. We called him all kinds of things. And he made his dude to run. You know, the point on this is exactly what you're saying. Is that, you know, and it, it goes back to this importance versus the <coughs> that we're having in the United States. We're so on the side of importance. Oh, we're state reps and we're important. Okay. And somehow the state is not important. Everybody has time. And, and those who struggle with those issues have tremendous value in and of themselves. And then what those of us who are around him realize uh, the mercy and the grace and the things that we, we develop as a result of that. We miss out on this. And I appreciate you. Uh, next, Monty from Arkansas. You got it right. All right. Monty. Pleasure to have you in our state. If you tell us who you are, who you represent, and your position on the bill. My name is Monty Bartek. I am representing myself, and I am testifying for this bill. I am a native Texican <laughs> transplant, <laughs> forced into Arkansas, but I want to drive all the way down here to support this bill. First off, I want to thank you guys sincerely from the depths of our heart for, for opening up your ears and listening to us, because I know this is very repetitive to you, and uh, I know it's tough. It's long hours. So, and I especially thank uh, Congresswoman Niavi even though she stepped out for a moment. Um, but it's important that we hear these testimonies. I ask that you would fully support this bill, not because you're a Republican, not because you're a Democrat, but because you are a human being. Each and every one of you were formed in your mother's womb. You are not a clump of cells, you are not a glob of tissue. When your mother and father made you, his sperm made it to your mother's egg. And the combination of those two things made life. You were too new to know you existed, and you were also too small to fight for your life. The safest place you could have was in your mother's womb. Aren't you thankful that your mother did not abort you? I know I am thankful that, uh, that my mother didn't abort me, and I know any, any person with a healthy mental state would also be thankful for that. Um, I know some children may not be perfect when, they, when they're born, not having all their fingers or toes or arms or legs or not even having the mental capacity that other babies have, but every baby is human and life is precious. Thank you, Monty. Uh, any questions? No, thank you again for making the trip over from Arkansas. Uh, thank you all very much for being here tonight. Uh, next, the chair will call uh, Matthew Holman, Adrian Magnum, Barbara Miller, and Joel Garcia. Uh, on deck, uh, we have Tom Hopling. Abigail Barreras, go and and Timothy Miller, 